Hi everyone. Welcome to Brown Girls Happy Hour. Today we are going to make a uh, an amazing cocktail inspired by a South Asian woman and it's uh, we are very excited for it. I'll wait for Zaman to join and we also have guests today with us. Uh we're going to be talking about to her about her inspiration. Hi Zaman. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. It's I'm excited for today's drink. Yeah, I am excited for the guest too cuz I have very interesting things to discuss about this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I think we can ask Seema to join as well. Hello. Hi, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is awesome. I mean, any excuse to have alcohol in the afternoon, I'm I'm here for it. <laughs> can you introduce yourself a little bit to our Yeah. Um so I'm Seema and I do have a bookstagram um the subtle librarian um I live in Portland Oregon I'm a medical librarian originally from California um yeah I mean I'm excited to talk about books and South Asian influence and women and alcohol and all these things so <laughs> <laughs> all good stuff <laughs> all good stuff yes so let's start by making the cocktail first yeah okay So to make this cocktail you need a shot and a half of gold rum and a honey syrup which is half water and half honey mixed and then you need one shot of cream I don't have cream so I'm substituting with oat milk which is kind of a creamier milk so I think it will go well so let's start with a shaker with ice in it and then a shot and a half of rum I don't have rum I'm substituting it with brandy. Oh, yeah. I used silver <laughs> rum cuz I don't have gold rum. Yeah, I don't have gold rum, I have white rum, but you know, this is pandemic okay. time. <laughs> yeah, so, just everything. Use, <laughs> use what you have. Yeah. <laughs> so then we have the honey syrup which is half honey, half water. The one uh, cream. Yeah, oh, yes. I added my own. I I did have sweet cream which I typically don't do like dairy products but for this I I bought sweet cream. I actually <laughs> for you guys. Shaking, swirling. This looks really good. All right, let's taste it. Cheers. Cheers. It's actually good. It is good. Interesting. Yeah, interesting for sure. I think we are not used to having milk kind of taste in cocktails, so brain is going all over the place right now. Like, what is it? I don't recognize. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can also taste. Milk. I can also taste honey, and I really like it. I think this is inspired by Rupi Kaur's book, right? Milk and honey. So that's why the recipe that's is true. kind of like this. Yeah. Speaking of which. Um have you read any of her books Seema? You know what I actually have not which I'm a little sad about like I own the book I own Milk and Honey but I have never fully read it I've seen a few of the poems like on social media and that's it that's like the gist of it um and I think she has well like three books now Yeah she really yeah uh, there was a new book called Homebody I haven't read that one Oh yeah that's the, new the other two I have read Okay. I need to oh, How is it? I have not read any of her books actually. I want to read it. I think she gets a lot of heat for not being like a I don't know what like to that level of poetry that people expect and there are a lot of jokes about it but I think she at least for South Asian women whatever she talks about I find it very relatable. So I don't find any of it like problematic which i always think like why is there such a backlash or maybe people just do it cuz she's very famous she became very famous and just you know that's people's way of reacting to it yeah. i don't know but yeah i think she talks about abuse and immigration and all these things and i think it's very relatable yeah i think um from what i've read like there is a very simplicity of her poems and i think that's why people are like well anyone can write this way but she writes from the heart and experience like you you're saying like a feminist perspective from a woman of color perspective and 
not being able to find um poets from our community and then you have her like it's like it's good for us because then we have people being able to look up to South Asian woman poet who's doing her thing and is succeeding in it so it's it's nice um and also like the lack of representation right so we usually we have a few books we refer to when we are picking cocktails because we also want to give shout out to women from history and even present times there was only one south asian woman rupee kaur that we found in like two or three books that we refer to so that that speaks volumes i think yeah yeah also to your point of like you know why people make fun of her or you know like try to like bring her down is because they just cannot imagine someone you know a woman from south asia being so famous and uh, you know have so many followers and she has published her own book so i think that is also that also relates to sort of like you know lack of representation and also like i guess um yeah our unwillingness to accept that you know women can be successful mhm and also people in arts get this a lot like you see some art you're like oh what's so special about it i can do this i don't know why a lot of people have the urge to say this but you cannot when you actually sit to do it whether it's painting or poetry or writing it's not easy but you know when people say that it's like oh why didn't you <laughs> you know like <laughs> you could have and you didn't and this person did and they are express expressing a feeling an emotion or a thought that's like on a canvas or through music or photography or whatever the medium is and it's just like well they did it and you did it so why are you judging like you know yeah. it's and also she holds up some uh, ig lives where she you know gives people prompts and then they can write uh, use that prompts to write poems and stuff and i watch her ig lives because i just love watching her on camera i don't know why because you know also like she has the serene music going on in the background and i do that uh, <laughs> but uh, her prompts and when i think about it um, i'm like i don't think i can write even one line using that you know it's so difficult if you're not a creative person um, but i think that's also a nice thing that it's simple because then it expands to a larger audience and it becomes more relatable you know growing up and you're in school and you're learning poetry and then they would give you a poem and you have to dissect it and like pick like figure out the theme and sometimes it's like so complicated even if it's beautiful like the meaning behind it it's so complicated and it's like well maybe we do need these simple poems in our day and age right to feel like okay like i know what they're saying and i don't have to like think so hard to figure out what they're trying to say yeah yeah so we were talking about lack of representation in south asian writing specifically and with your south asian bookshelf i think that's kind of what you are doing still um tell us more about it like how did the idea come up how did you start doing that and how's it going now So yes, um last summer I decided to start South Asian Bookshelf um really just to discover South Asian authors and books that are out there because I wasn't reading them and I'm like, well I'm South Asian, why am I not reading from my own diaspora and my community, right? I only can figure out white authors and we talk about this on Bookstagram too even with like the um BIPOC community and like trying to read more of their books and it's just like why don't we like why don't we know about these things and that's a problem with publishing too which a different conversation but um yeah i just wanted to like find authors and read their books and really find myself in the characters um because i was like i'm not reading enough south asian books I need to do this. I need to fix this problem. Um and so with social media with Bookstagram it's like I can do it. I can share what I'm finding and also discover um authors and books through social media. One thing that I've found difficult though is I will find titles that I want to read but because they're being published in India or Pakistan or another South Asian country they're not being published in america so it's hard to get those books yeah. so then we're missing out on another group 
um, of authors that were not like getting to read, right? And so sometimes I kind of notice, especially with young adult right now, South Asian authors are doing their thing. They're trying to create South Asian characters, but sometimes it feels kind of too white. Um, and so I'm kind of like, how, how do we move past that? I don't yeah, know. I think when the authors are, let's say, Indian American, in that case, they, there's a certain whiteness that comes to it. And we also have felt the same way. Like there are some books we wanted to read, but we couldn't find them here in the US. Yeah. Like on our podcast, we, we read all kinds of books. We are not like uh, doing only South Asian books, but we do try to amplify brown voices more. But there are times when we are like, okay, can't find this book. Really wanted to read this, but it's it's not here. So what do we do at this point? Right. Find another book, whichever right. is like really, you know, famous right now or something. Right. Which is okay and nice, but sometimes it's like the really good books are so hard to get. <laughs> or like they're so new that everyone's reading them and then like there's different conversations happening. Like for example, um, was it a burning? which like I would see people reading it and talking about it. And then I kind of had to like look at own voices, like figuring out what their thoughts are. And so then I started to see, well, this book is kind of problematic and here's why. And this is why it's getting really great reviews because a lot of people aren't own voices or own voice readers. So it's like that kind of a situation too of, how do we get, you know, more South Asian readers to read South Asian books and like talking about them rather than these popular South Asian books being read by non-South Asian readers and then becoming popular, if that makes sense. First yeah. reading. And then it's like, um, what is like trauma porn is what they call it, where it's like always so sad and like political. And it's like, well, I get it, but I want to read like, other stories because there are other experiences you know I think that's a problem with the whole BIPOC thing where if let's say white people or non-BIPOC people are reading the books they kind of want only want the stories that show like pain and struggle and like the normal lives are just totally ignored yeah. well so on your South Asian bookshelf mm -hmm. I have read along a few of your books, not yes. all. What are your like top three so far? I really liked The Henna Artist and I was really surprised that I would like it so much. Um, it was, so that's like a historical fiction and it's not about trauma and oppression. It was just this like basic story of this woman, you know, and just doing her thing and figuring out life. and. It was just like, it was nice and refreshing. I would say, so Loved Half Gods, which is um, more like a short story style. Um, also talks about the Sri Lankan Civil War, but then it kind of reflects about a family that like lives in America and how that the war shapes their like life in America, I would say this land is our land, which is a nonfiction. And that really goes into the immigrant life and experience and colonialism and a little bit of oppression and all this, all, all these things about what was happening internationally and in the United States. So that was my top three. So I guess I co we covered different kinds of style of writing and books coming back to since it's a happy hour uh mm -hmm. coming back to cocktails what's your favorite cocktail so i'm a ooh, i love wine it's not a cocktail but i am a whiskey drinker so old fashions okay. are my favorite and i love dirty martinis my top two mm -hmm. good choices yeah <laughs> thank you so much Seema for joining us today this was so much fun this was great thank you for having me this was delicious I'm probably going to make another one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies. Cheers. Cheers.